Hey guys! So today I have like a Q&A video for you guys um, and I'm actually really excited about this video because I've been trying since I posted the last two videos. I think it was a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago now. I don't know exactly when. <laughs> um, but ever since I posted those, I have been attempting and failing like regularly to try and get you guys more videos. I've been filming a ton of videos and they just are not working out for a bajillion reasons, whether it's the lighting or it's blurry or my dog has like a freaking meltdown in the middle of it or Everett wakes up from his nap or needs lunch or blah blah blah. So I'm trying really really hard. I really hope that I can get through this video without too many interruptions. <laughs> Fingers crossed and if not then I'll have to finish it later on in the afternoon after Michael gets home. So We'll just see. We may start the video here on my couch and then end it somewhere completely different. I don't know. <laughs> so, and like I said, um, these awkward random filming spots will hopefully get themselves worked out and everything at a soon later date. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I asked you guys, I posted a picture on Instagram and I asked you guys to ask me whatever the heck you wanted to ask me. Um, and I read through some of these questions, but I tried not to think about them too, too much because I didn't want to like, like overthink them or taint my answers. But I do kind of know what we're getting into and I really hope I can fit all these questions into this video. I don't want it to be insanely long, but at the same time, knowing me, it will be anyways. But I'm just so happy to be here right now. Like I just have to like stop for a second. I'm so thankful that after everything that has gone on <laughs> the past couple days that I'm finally here sitting down filming for you. I even had, I even had time to put on mascara. Like what the heck, Hannah? <sighs> and I even like put on like a nice top. I mean, I'm wearing like sweatpants on the bottom, but you know, wearing a nice top. Okay, first question. What is your favorite indie brand or brands and can you explain the meanings of your tattoos that you have? Um, okay, uh, so in terms of indie brands, I am kind of sad to say that I don't have as much experience as I would want to have. For a lot of reasons, I don't buy a ton of indie brands. Um, I have some. I definitely, I mean, I want to say I have a lot, <laughs> I do. Especially when I went down to Denver to visit Katie a couple years ago. We went to the LaRoe like brick and mortar store and I just, which I don't think exists anymore, but I just like tried so many freaking different brands. Um, I do have a favorite, but I just wanna like disclose that like, I really do wanna try more. So I feel like I have almost like a biased view especially because I know her and she's so sweet. Um, <laughs> Nine Zero Lacquer is probably my absolute favorite um, indie brand. And she's just, I don't know, the quality has just been so amazing. I mean, I didn't get anything sent for free or anything. Um, Michael has bought me all of these polishes uh, for Christmas, um, except for one or two. I can't remember. She may have sent me one a long, long time ago, but I'm totally blanking. But anyways, she, um, Michael bought me the entire uh, Polish of the month, month series from 2016, and the quality is just so amazing, and the holographic properties are just so intense. It's like nothing else that I've tried. So from what I've tried, I and maybe even 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 if I did try like a five billion brands, I'm sure I'd probably pick her because it's just, I just really love what she's doing. It's really inventive and it's totally my style. I mean, there's a lot of brands that go and try like really crazy stuff, which is really cool. I respect that artistically, but like in terms of what I'd actually want to wear on my nails, um, some of it's like a little bit overboard for what I would like. So that's another reason why I really like Nine Zero Lacquer because it's really cool and inventive, but it's wearable for me, for what I like. That was really, really long, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you explain the meanings of the tattoos that you have? Okay, so I have three tattoos and um, I don't know, I'm kind of sad that I don't have, one, that I don't have more, and two, that I don't really have any tattoos that are like just for me. If that makes any sense, I'll explain. Um, my first tattoo is this one right here. I'll see if I can insert better pictures because this is, these are really awkward angles, but basically, uh, <laughs> basically it is an 
it's M heart H, which is Michael heart Hannah. And actually like the M heart H thing, that's something that we started doing right when we were, like first started dating. We were in high school and we wrote like little notes to each other and we did like an M heart H with like a, a heart around it. It was basically this exact design, just not nearly as like fancy and jazzed up. Um, so it just means a lot to me. It's just something that like, I don't ever wanna forget that, that piece of where we began, you know what I mean? Um, and that was my first tattoo and then my second tattoo I actually got basically at the same time and it is just a little teeny tiny heart I don't know if it'll focus. It's a little teeny tiny heart on my um, ring finger and it actually really needs to get fixed up. It's kind of I Don't love the shape that it is and it's kind of like patchy and messed up. I didn't I'm not gonna lie both this tattoo and this tattoo I I'm never going back to that tattoo shop ever again. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> so I do want to get this fixed up and nice, but I do really, I do really love it. It's almost like a piece of jewelry, and I kind of got it with the intention of what if I ever lost my wedding ring or something, just a reminder kind of thing. And then my third tattoo. Let me see if I can do this in camera. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'll see if I can again um, insert a better picture. Me and my sister actually went together to go get um, this tattoo last year, I think. I think it's been about a year since I've had it. Um, I think, I don't know. But it's basically, it's a bobby pin and it has sis written in like the squiggly part of the bobby pin. And um, for a lot of reasons, it just kind of like represents me and her and our friendship and sisterhood. Like when, um, she's a lot older, not a lot, lot older, but she's about seven or eight years older than me. So growing up, it's like she was more of a, I don't know, she was very mothering to me in a lot of ways, you know? Um, I mean, we're like best friends now, but like back then it was like the age difference was a big deal. And she would do my hair all the time. She had cut my hair. She had there's just like a lot of stories and I'm not going to try and like get into all of it, but basically like <laughs> hair <laughs> is like an important part of our, uh, our past and our relationship. So that's what that's about. And we always call each other sis, obviously. So it's not like, I don't have like crazy creative tattoos right now, but I seriously like the second this baby pops out, I am going to try and get myself into the tattoo shop and get a tattoo that's just mine for me. I have a ton of ideas and I just, yeah, I just want to get in there and get something. Again, another really long answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Do you have an all time favorite nail polish? If so, what is it? It may be a cop-out answer, but I'm just gonna say China Glaze Fairy Dust. And it's not like, I know people are kind of like, what's the big deal about it? It's not necessarily that it's like insanely unique anymore. I mean, it kind of used to be, but now there's a lot of indie brands in particular that have dupes for it or, you know, things that are similar to it. Um, so it's not like it's insanely unique necessarily, but it's just so special to me. Um, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful and it's the kind of polish that I just like I put it on everything I put fairy dust fairy dust on top of like every single manicure not literally every manicure but Like probably nine times out of ten when I do nail art I stick fairy dust somewhere in the, <laughs> in the manicure or if I have a polish that like a plain cream or something that I like But I'm just like mm, it's just missing something then I'll throw fairy dust on you know like it just makes everything better. And maybe I'd have a different answer if I thought about it a lot longer, but, but probably not actually. I'm, yeah. Trying to glaze fairy dust. And by the way, I am in my third trimester and I get out of breath really easily. So I didn't just run up and down the stairs for you. <laughs> I'm just always out of breath. <clears throat> Can you do a top, top 10 China Glaze, favorite China Glaze video? Why can't I speak? Um, yes, I can absolutely do that. Um, that would probably be something that I could probably throw together pretty soon, pretty easily. I do have a top, I think it's a top five China Glaze. I think, I think I have like, yeah, it's top five China Glazes. Um, I have that on my channel already, but that is from a couple years ago. I think I did like China Glaze and Zoya and maybe OPI. I did a couple. I did a little video series like that. Um, and so I'll definitely try and do a top 10. Um, 
it may not be exactly 10 it might be 5 or 7 or 15 I don't know but yeah we'll definitely definitely add that to my list of videos uh, Miss Nail Queen said hi super happy to see you on YouTube again with like lots of heart emojis and stuff um, my question is what polish do you wish you had um, and your baby boy is so cute and congratulations on your soon to arrive baby thank you Miss Nail Queen um, and yes, I totally agree with you. He is absolutely adorable. Um, <laughs> what polish do you wish you had? Oh my gosh, that is like, to narrow it down to one is like really, that's really hard to say. Just like the first thing that popped in my head because I know that I could blab on for like a million years. Like I could say like basically every polish that 90 Lacquer has ever come out with or you know, so <laughs> I could say something like that. But um, the first thing that popped into my head was uh, Color Club from their Halo Hues collection, from their first Halo Hues collection, the silver hollow from that one. And I'm totally blanking on, on its name right now. I will figure it out and put it somewhere on the screen. I'm totally blanking on the name, but I've wanted that polish for forever and it's always sold out and I can never find it. And plus they're really expensive, so it's kind of hard to, I mean, not insanely expensive, but for, for Color Club, I like to spend like three or four dollars versus, you know, ten dollars. So probably that one, just because that was the very first thing that popped in my head. I know that that's kind of a cop-out answer, but I don't know. You asked a really hard question. All right, moving on. Um, how did you meet your husband and how did you get into nail polish and mommy videos? Um, oh, geez, I'm like clicking things I didn't mean to. Whoops. Where's the question again? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Okay. <laughs> How did I meet my husband? Um, we met in high school. We are like for sure high school sweethearts, although I kind of hate that phrase because it sounds kind of cliche and kind of, um, I don't know, like I feel like it doesn't really give full meaning. You know what I mean? Like it kind of cheapens the way, I don't know if that makes any sense, I'm sorry. Um, I hope that didn't offend anybody. Um, we met in high school, well actually technically middle school, although I feel like he totally had no idea who I was in middle school. <laughs> um, we met in band and he played the trumpet, I played the clarinet and saxophone. And in middle school, he had like this really, really amazing jazz solo um, in jazz band. But he had this really insane solo and I was like, damn you know and so like I had my eye on him and then we just never really like he was a grade above me and apparently in middle school that like means something I don't know <laughs> so we never really talked but then in um, high school I was a freshman he was a sophomore again it was we had band and jazz band there were two separate classes and we just kind of started talking and it was like it was just instantaneous we became friends um, although I think we both wanted more for a long time but then like just he was kind of chicken and stuff it was it's a cute story if you want I, I feel like we talked about this because I, I did the husband tag with him and that's also on my channel I'll try and link all the videos that I've been talking about if I can remember um but we did the husband tag like two year three years ago I don't even know now a long time ago um and I think we must have talked about it there but I don't I don't know for sure. If you want, like Michael, I, I'm sure I could get Michael to be in more videos and we can have like a whole husband Q&A or something. <laughs> um, how did you get into nail polish? Um, it was basically like, it was, let's see here. We had just gotten married and we moved to this like crappy college town. We were going to school, we were going to college and this super crappy small college town that I really didn't like and this super teeny tiny apartment that was just like a dump <laughs> it really was it was like like 400 square feet dump it was it was yeah but it was okay because we were newly with and we didn't really matter we didn't really matter it didn't really matter to us um but I was kind of just looking for something that made me feel girly I guess I don't know if that's that's not quite the right word that I want to say but it's like I was kind of searching for my identity and I hated makeup and I really I just wanted to do something for myself that felt I don't know 
it's it just something that like a pampering kind of thing and so I started trying nail polish I started like I went to the drugstore and I got a I got a bunch of wet and wilds and then I just really started getting into it and then I started watching YouTube and the YouTube was like the big like kickoff um, I think uh, Miss Holly Berries was like the very first nail YouTuber that I ever started watching I was like oh my god we need to be like besties I think she's amazing oh hold on a second I'm getting a phone call hi baby hey how's it going pretty good how's it going with you you want to say hi to the YouTubes oh oh my goodness <laughs> I'm famous. <laughs> you are famous. We just we just got done talking about you, actually. Ah, uh, joy. <laughs> okay, I'll pause the video. In case you guys wanted a uh, bump update, I am 28 weeks pregnant, and 28 weeks and some change, and uh, this baby's getting big. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, no other random interruptions. But you know, you honestly never know. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, how I got into nail polish. Basically, I was just looking for something like, I don't know, some sort of identity crisis, right? <laughs> um, and then I found nail polish, found the YouTube channel, and then I just kind of like exploded and my polish collection exploded and my interest in nail art exploded and my talent exploded. And I mean, that sounds kind of vain. I don't mean that, but I just got, I got a lot better. I practiced a lot more and and it just became something really important to me and then I started watching more and more YouTube and it just, I don't know, it just kind of exploded. So hopefully that answers your question. And I think that that was the only question. Oh, mommy videos. I would love to do mommy videos. Yeah, I would absolutely love to do mommy videos. Um, if you have any specific topics that you want me to cover, um, please, please, please let me know what they are because I am kind of like, I'm not sure where to start because <laughs> I want this channel to just be about me and truthfully whether I like it or not <laughs> you know my life is basically 100% my kids right now um, and that's the I mean that's great that's totally fine but I do want to have I want to have something that's mine my YouTube channel have some nail stuff on there, have some of my interests and, and hobbies and stuff like that on there. But also, you know, what am I interested in? What is my life right now? And that's mommy stuff. So definitely want to do that. I have one, kind of two mommy videos planned right now um, that will be coming up, I'm hoping, in like a week or so. So we'll cross our fingers for that too. Um, but like I said, if you have any other mommy type videos that you'd like me to to any topics you want me to address please let me know okay uh what base coat and top coat do you recommend <sighs> top coat for I, the one that i'm using i've constantly been using i haven't really stopped has been seche vite or seche vite or however you want to say it because i know that there's a lot of controversy out there about how to say it um and that's just the one I love it because it just works really well for me and um, and it's readily available like and the price isn't horrible so I can find it at like the drugstore I can go Target Walmart I can find it basically everywhere which is nice if I need it and and honestly I've tried a lot of other like top coats that people talk about and they love and stuff and I've just never thought that they were that different or that much more special than China or than China Glaze than Sejvit. So I don't know. Like I tried the uh, HK Girl. I just never really thought that it was it was good, but it felt to me as good as Sejvit. And in terms of base coats, I'm actually on the hunt for another like for a good base coat. <laughs> so if you guys have any suggestions, um, let me know. I have been using Orly's Bonder base coat recently which is good it's fine but it's like I don't know it's not like insane it does what I need it to do and then I also use when I have um and I've been telling you guys this again for years is the uh what's it called nail teaks formula 2 for like dry peely weak nails um that is definitely a problem for me not so much when I'm pregnant but just in general um, and so then I do use that as like a treatment base coat in between, although it does not hold on to your nail polish very well. So those would be my recommendations, although I really, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm the best person to ask. 
Okay, uh, next question. Why was the sudden change in your haircut? Is it too hot where you live? How many polishes do you have? And I missed your video, so glad you're up and at it again. Well, thank you, hon. I'm really, really glad to be here again as well. <laughs> um, so why the sudden change in haircut? Uh, I mean, to me, it didn't seem that sudden. I've had this haircut for about, or some variation of this haircut for about a year now. I think I got it in July of 2016. Um, and it didn't really seem that sudden to me just because it is some, it's something that I have wanted to try basically my whole life. I wanted to do a pixie cut and I've just been like, I don't know. I've just kept putting it off or I was too scared or stupid reasons, <laughs> but I've always wanted to try a pixie cut. I just thought that it would just be so cool and then I cut all my hair off and I was like oh my god this is me what was I what the heck was I waiting for and it is seriously the most like amazing haircut ever I feel like I could do <clears throat> like a whole 20 minute video about my haircut the way that I get it cut why I get it cut the way that I do um the benefits that like it's like life-changing for me like I don't I don't even style this hair like it just I'm gonna try to restrain myself but I <laughs> I just I just freaking love it I feel like it's me and I don't know I don't know all those people that tried to tell me that a plus size girl could not cut her hair super short and have it look good or like oh maybe you don't have the right face shape for that or blah blah blah, blah. you know fuck it it's stupid okay those reasons are stupid if you want to cut off all your hair do it <laughs> Plus, I, I will all this add this in. Um, plus, I had a recently had a baby, and it felt like a really special thing that I can do for myself to work to reward myself because it's really hard being a new mom. So I was like, I'm gonna go get my hair cut off, and I did it with my younger sister too. She also got a pixie, although she's grown hers out now, so she doesn't have one anymore. Um, is it too hot where you live? Not really, and that's not really why I did it. I mean, it is really hot right now. I live in a very strange part of the country where it can get all the way up to like 105, sometimes more in the summertime, and then it can get all the way down to like, you know, the negatives <laughs> um, in the wintertime. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I live in um, Eastern Washington, and so it's like we're kind of sandwiched between like the forest and the desert and so we have strange weather and we have all four seasons which i love but it's so hot right now and i hate it thank god for my air conditioning in my new house um <laughs> how many polishes do you have i honestly have no idea i haven't even fully unpacked all my polish yet from moving and we moved in december so I have no idea, but the last time that I checked my spreadsheet, which is not updated at all, it was around 1200, but I, that's another video that I do want to do is like a declutter um, kind of video. And then I was totally going to just maybe do like a giveaway with all those nail polishes that I'm not going to be hanging on to. So maybe just keep your eyes open for that. Um, next question. Can you do a favorite nail polishes for fall video? Sure. I think I could uh, try and try and make that work. I definitely going to be a harder video for me to film than something like a summer or a spring because the the more fall winter colors are not quite my forte. But you know, I might really like that kind of a challenge. So I will definitely add that again to my list of videos that I need to be filming. <laughs> um, what will you do differently with a second pregnancy birth? and child than you did with the first and why and any advice for PCOS conception. Thanks, Boo XO. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Anything I'm gonna be doing differently with a second pregnancy? Not necessarily, except for I would say that I'm a lot more relaxed this time around. I'm just calm. Like part of it comes from, you know, you just, you just know that it's okay, you know? Like you recognize some of those weird feelings or those weird twinges or pains and stuff and you're like, no, that's okay, it's whatever, you know? Or you're just, I don't know, I just have like a, after being a parent now also, it's not just pregnancy, but after being a parent, you kind of just have to let some of that stuff go. Like, do I love the fact that my son has had Wendy's chicken nuggets? 
no, I don't love the fact that we did that. But you know, you just kind of have to like let some of that stuff slide and be like, you know what, he's fine, he's healthy. Who cares if he has fast food every once in a while? You know, things like that where it's just like, you know, just letting things slide. So that's kind of something that I've been doing differently. I'm just calm, more chill. I don't, I'm not like watching every single thing that I'm eating. <laughs> I'm just kind of going with the flow and trying to be as healthy mentally as I can instead of super worrying about the little tiny details that in the long run probably won't make a big difference, but my stress level will make a huge difference for the baby. So things like that. Um, in terms of the birth, um, I kind of want to do another, a whole separate video about this because it looks like I will unfortunately have to be going down the route of C-section again, which is something that's really hard for me to deal with and something that I'm, I'm having to kind of figure out how to cope with every single day. So, um, and if you watched my, my update video, you'll kind of understand why just the traumatic event of Everett's birth has kind of been making the impending birth <laughs> of my second baby kind of is just really real and very intense and knowing that I have to go through a c-section again is it's just scary so um it's definitely different than the birth plan I had with Everett which was to go all natural as long as I could and um and I made it a really really long way in fact they had to tell me like like bitch you need to sleep just take the epidural <laughs> you need and I was like okay okay <laughs> so yeah I don't know if that answers your question very fully but um I don't know I, I do want to do like a whole thing because I would love to have some support um and advice from other moms who've been there done that so yeah um any advice advice for PCOS conception this is another video that I again God, I feel like I'm just like listing up all these other videos that I want to do but I do have I actually have a a whole page of notes already written out for this video. I want to do my infertility and PCOS and um, conception story um, and kind of like just tell you guys what what I've been through to maybe help some of you guys but at the same time I realized that I was incredibly fortunate um, and it's not it's not that easy for everybody. Um, just as a little snippet, um, I we did use Clomid, and the first round of Clomid worked, and I got pregnant that very first time with Everett. So um, it worked for me. However, there was a whole long list of other suggestions and things that they wanted me to do, um, like especially like weight loss things, and and this is a whole like I said a whole separate topic. Um, but in case you didn't know, PCOS can make you gain weight like crazy and can make it almost impossible to lose weight. So, and then they're like, oh, well, if you want to get pregnant, then just lose weight. And then your, you know, your, your fertility may or may not come back. And it's like, well, that's not very helpful. So, um, yeah, I do. I'll, I'll try and do like a whole separate video and I really want to try and get that out like as soon as possible, but I don't know. Hopefully that, that helped a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, this next question, um, when a fast dry top coat is used on my nails, the tips become misty. Why is this? Am I doing something wrong or is that just how it is? Totally huge fan of yours. I'm not 100% sure of what exactly you're referring to. I'm not sure what you mean by misty. Um, if you mean like, like if you're doing like nail art or something, and your brush strokes can kind of smear the polish or the, the, the nail art, maybe? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. If you guys have any advice for her, um, leave that down below, or even if you wanted to go and comment directly on this, on this post, that might be really helpful to her. I'm not really sure what, what you mean, but if it is like a brush strokey, smeary problem, then, I would suggest using something that has like a really, really soft brush. Sege Beat has a pretty soft brush and using like a bigger glob of top coat and just really smooth, fast, light strokes and practice, I guess, is like the best thing that I could say. 
um, and also cap, cap the tips because that's just always a good idea. So I'm really sorry. I don't, I, I don't know how to answer your question. I'm sorry. All right, next question. Hello, Hannah. I'm going to be a first time grandmother. Oh, congratulations. Tell me something that your baby's grandparents did for you that meant a lot or that was helpful to you. Does that make sense? Absolutely does make sense. Um, uh, let's see here. Well, honestly, <laughs> honestly, when I had my first son, um, financially, it was, it was a, a big undertaking. Um, and so Michael's parents um, purchased some of the nursery furniture, some of those bigger items that we definitely could not afford on our budget. Um, so that was really, really helpful. And I'm not, I'm not saying go out and spend a thousand dollars or something, but I'm just saying that from Michael's parents, that was a really, really helpful thing that they did. And, and honestly, from my side of the family, I mean, from both sides, of course, but particularly my mom, um, her just her support and um, advice like I had a lot of issues with breastfeeding and stuff in the beginning and she had breastfed six kids and she was just really she just had the best advice because it's like doctors can tell you stuff nurses and stuff you can do research and stuff but there's just something about the advice of, of a mom some I can definitely say that sometimes it can go overboard and you're like whoa hold on <laughs> But um, just I, I would just say advice and support and also especially in those first early early um, few weeks and stuff when things are crazy um, like this next time around I'm gonna have I'm gonna be recovering from a c-section and have a toddler and have a newborn and my mom has already said she's gonna be here she's like you know if you want me to sleep in your guest room and we'll just you know I'll be here for you and we'll make it work and stuff and that just eases my mind a lot knowing that I don't know, knowing that I'd have help and support if I needed it, you know? If you wanted to make food or something, that would be another nice gesture or... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I totally thought of something, totally thought of something. <laughs> Michael's mom, um, she made this shadow box collage of uh, like little things from Michael's baby years. Like there was um, the hat he came home from the hospital. There was a little ultrasound pic. There was a um, his favorite book from when he was a, a toddler. And I think there was like some socks or a sweater or something. There was, it was just a super adorable shadow box that she put together. And, um, and it was just really, it, we put that in Everett's nursery and it just meant a lot. And it was just kind of like a, a sweet gesture, like, you know, this is, this is, you were little too, you know, and now I'm going to be, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I feel like every answer is like so long. I'm sorry, guys. All right, we're getting close, guys. I'm sorry. Um, how many polishes are in your collection now? Which overseas mainstream brands or indie brands would you really like to try? Do your friends and family think you're crazy for having such a huge collection? Um, how many polishes are in my collection? I think I said that before. I don't actually know if I actually stated the number, but I, the last time I checked it was around 1,200, but I do want to, I want to get rid of some. Oh jeez. It looks like the goober is awake and talking. <laughs> Alright, I'll go get him in a second. Um, which overseas or mainstream brands or indie brands would you like to try? Oh my gosh, so many. I don't even know where to start. Oh my gosh. Actually, you know what cupcake polish I have bought cupcake polish for a few of my close friends um, and I want to try them so bad but I've just never like I've never I've never been able to like bite the bullet and spend the money for myself so probably cupcake polish just because it just seems like so much fun um, do your friends and family think you're crazy for having such a huge collection? Not really anymore. Um, I think I used to get teased for it before, but honestly, it's kind of uh, helpful to, to some of the members of my family. They like it, they use it, so um, not really anymore, but they did at the beginning. They were, they were kind of, they would tease me about it, so. All right, let's see if we can finish this video up. Um, if you're favorite brand of polish made your dream collection what would be the theme and the colors and finishes Ooh, oh my god um i don't know about theme that one's kind of hard to say 
the colors and finishes if there was a collection that was like insane neons but like like you know easy to work with neons <laughs> like crazy neons and like like holographics combining neons and holographics into one which i guess isn't like a crazy new idea i'm sure that some indie brands and stuff have have done that but i don't know i feel like they haven't done it in the way that like the exact way that i'm picturing and wanting i don't know because i know that there's like neon brands and then they have like a holographic top coat but if you were able to like actually put an insanely neon hue like the eye searing highlighter kind of bright hue with holographic and so it shined rainbows also i might pee my pants it would probably be something like that and i don't know what the theme of that would be maybe like like i don't know electric space unicorn throw up or something i don't know <laughs> something like that all right guys so i think that this actually worked out pretty good everett just woke up from his nap and so i'm gonna go get him and we somehow managed to finish all the questions which i'm very proud of myself i know that this video is probably really long i apologize but at the same time you know if you don't like long videos it's probably not the channel for you <laughs> so um yeah, let me know down below, you know, answer all those. Uh, I know that I asked you guys a lot of questions. <laughs> I, pr I asked you to provide me with a lot of feedback. So um, definitely let me know video ideas and stuff like that that you want to be seeing like first um, down below, like what's most interesting to you guys. And I will try my best to get those out to you as soon as possible. And I love you guys so, so much. And thank you so much for watching and always supporting me and being here. You guys are just, you're the bee's knees. <laughs> and um, yeah, I will talk to you guys later. And thank you so much for the questions, by the way. If you don't already follow me on Instagram and you want to be involved in more of these Q&As, then go do that. So yeah, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later and I'll see you soon. Bye.